I'm going to be talking about bovine colostrum. This is a presentation that I put together for my nutritional supplements class at NCNM, which is the National College of Natural Medicine, and that is where I am currently completing my master's in nutrition. And I decided to pick this supplement because it's one that's helped me, and there's been a lot of talk about it um, in the SIBO world recently. So I'm going to start by talking about what colostrum is and its functions. So colostrum is the early milk. It can come from cows or humans, um, but usually, usually in the supplement form, well, always that I know of in the supplement form, it's going to be from cows, and it's it comes within the first four days after birth for cows. For humans, it's shorter. The purpose is to provide passive immunity to the infant or the calf and also protection for the developing immune and gastrointestinal systems. It has um, a variety of different items that make up its composition, but the quantities of each of these is going to vary based on the specific product that you're looking at, and that's due to a variety of factors that we'll discuss a little bit later in the presentation. And to start out, there's protein, carbohydrates, fat, vitamins, and minerals. And these components are also in mature milk, and the composition is pretty similar, um, unlike some of the other components that are unique to colostrum. So when the colostrum is processed into a supplement, most of the milk fat, casein, lactalbumin, and lactose are removed during that processing. Some other components, growth factors, including in insulin growth factors 1 and 2, TGF-beta, epidermal growth factor, and platelet-derived growth factor. And these may help with stimulating growth and repair of the GI tract, as well as um, getting into the systemic circulation and having benefits there. TGF-beta, one of those growth factors, it has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects as well as induce um, regulatory T cells, which are cells of the immune system that help to calm the immune system and make it not go into overdrive, um, which is something that can happen um, with SIBO and food intolerances um, when we're reacting to our foods and our foods are really help trying to help us and we don't want that. Another component is um, or immune components, and these include immunoglobulins and cytokines. Immunoglobulins in colostrum include IgG, IgM, and IgL, IgA, excuse me, um, including the secretory forms of these. There's also cytokines, including interleukin 1 beta, IL 2, IL 6, IL 17, TNF alpha, and interferon gamma. Antimicrobial compounds include lactoferrin, which has antibacterial and antiviral properties. It also binds lipopolysaccharides, and it's growth regulating. There's lactoperoxidase, which is both antibacterial and antiviral. And then there's oligosaccharides, which may protect um, against pathogens as well as help grow the beneficial microflora. So next we'll talk about the conditions and uses that colostrum has been researched for. So one of them is athletic performance, both in terms of body composition and exercise performance. And there have been some mixed results. Um, there's actually a fair amount of studies on this particular use for colostrum. Um, in elite athletes, it has been shown to improve exercise performance of short bursts, but not endurance exercise but have no impact on body composition, whereas for non-elite athletes, um, they, ha they have from colostrum improved body composition, in particular um, more lean body, lean muscle mass, but there was no observed impact on strength. Another use is for um, HIV and AIDS. One of the common symptoms is immunodeficiency-related diarrhea. And when the patients in the study were given um, colostrum, it resulted in a normalization of their stool frequency, and these positive benefits um, continued even after discontinuation of the supplement. Another use has been for upper respiratory tract infections, also known as common, the common cold, and there, the benefits have been seen both prophylactically, meaning 
um, before getting the cold, and also in terms of reducing the severity. Another use is for infectious disease prevention and treatment, including for Cryptosporidia, H. pylori, rotavirus, Shigella, and cholera. And I, I should mention that the study that I looked at for H. pylori, H. pylori mentioned that um, it didn't completely eliminate it, so it's definitely not meant to be an only treatment, but perhaps um, you may want to do a little more research on your own if this is something you're looking into, but perhaps um, helping to eradicate that. Multiple sclerosis. Um, this one's interesting because it was shown to be beneficial um, only if the cow had been vaccinated with the measles vaccine. And I'm not exactly sure why this is, but that was really interesting to me. Another use is for colitis, which is intestinal inflammation. And the colostrum in this study was administered via an enema. Um, another use is for gut damage from either surgery or um, short-term non-steroidal and anti-inflammatory drug use. Um, those are things like um, Tylenol, other pain relievers. Um, and what colostrum helped with was reducing gastric injury, so that's related to the stomach. Also decreasing intestinal inflammation, um, reducing the endotoxins, and reducing intestinal permeability, which it mentioned um, would lead to less bacterial overgrowth, as well as translocation of bacteria to other regions of the body. For oral use, it's been used in Sjogren's syndrome um, for oral hygiene products, as well as for oral lichen planus, and as a mouth rinse, um, as a component of a mouth rinse for dental plaque. Finally, um, one of the other research uses is for dry eyes, and it was a component um, of a tear substitute. So the dosing um, in terms of optimal dose and duration of treatment has not been established. Um, the longest duration that I found in my research was um, studies where people took colostrum for up to eight weeks. Um, and it's really difficult to compare the different studies, and um, that's because there's a lack of standardization um, in terms of what's actually in the product and how that's, it's not really measured out usually. Um, how much lactoferrin is there? How, much, how many immunoglobulins? Um, so on and so on. And so that poses an issue when trying to compare different products. When looking at dosing information on the Natural Medicines database, I found that for adults, a dose of 400 to 5,000 milligrams one to three times daily is what they were seeing, um, I don't know if it was in studies, it wasn't very clear, um, but they were saying that's a typical dose. And then I looked at a systematic review from 2014 of bovine colostrum, and in these studies, the amounts that were being supplemented were much, much higher um, in terms of the upper limit. The lower limit was really low, so it was a wide range, um, but it ranged from 14 milligrams three times daily to 60 grams daily, um, which would be 60,000 milligrams. So that was pretty crazy to me. It can be taken in a variety of forms. Um, these include powder, capsules, liquid solution, enema, and topical. I think the most common that I've seen have been powder and capsules. Some precautions and interactions that you may like to be aware of before you take it. One is that um, it can be contaminated, or there's a chance of that. Um, there have been studies looking at um, PCBs and DDT and other chemicals in um, human breast milk, and these have been found. So it's definitely possible that these would also be found in bovine colostrum. Um, but from what I've read in terms of human milk, the benefits outweigh the risks of consuming those toxins. Um, so perhaps this isn't too big of a deal, but just maybe something to look for um, if there's organic supplements or something like that. 
Another thing to be aware of is that um, many conventionally raised cows in the United States especially um, are given bovine growth hormone to increase their milk production. And this is illegal in New Zealand. So if you're purchasing um, colostrum from New Zealand, it should be free of bovine growth hormone. There is some concern about bovine colostrum potentially increasing levels of um, insulin growth factor 1, and this has been implicated in some cancers, um, but there are contradicting, contradicting studies in terms of whether it actually raises the serum, meaning the blood levels of this growth hormone. It is important to know that if you have a milk allergy, which is different than a sensitivity, an allergy is um, a response that occurs right away, it's much more severe than a sensitivity. But if you do have a milk allergy, you should not take colostrum. <laughs> um, there is um, insufficient evidence regarding its use during pregnancy and lactation, so um, not recommended for those. So I mentioned that there are some different factors that will influence the composition of the colostrum, and some of these include the breed of the cow, um, the health status of the cow, the feeding practices, so whether they're fed things like corn or whether they eat grass, um, the time collected after birth. So um, the first 24 hours um, is when the concentration of immunoglobulins will be the highest in the milk, which is considered ideal. But you have to also keep in mind that the calf they receive benefit from the colostrum, and if we're using it for supplementation, the calf might not be getting it. So there are definitely some companies out there that um, refuse to collect it before 24 hours so that the calf can get some nutrition from the colostrum before it's used for supplementation. And then the other thing that can affect the composition of different supplements is the processing and concentration methods, um, especially how much the supplement is heated, because that can kill off some of the different um, beneficial elements of it. There are no known drug or supplement interactions. Um, in terms of food interactions, the only one that I found was that um, colostrum may decrease antibody activity um, from increased hydrochloric acid, which is stomach acid, um, or digestive enzymes, um, and that was interesting to me. Um, not totally sure how that works, but something to keep in mind. Um, colostrum is generally considered safe, um, and it's well tolerated. Uh, there are several studies out there that report no sort of side effects from their participants, um, but there are other studies that do show um, some mild side effects, and some of these include flatulence, nausea, unpleasant taste, that would be probably from a powder um, form of the supplement, and skin rash. And there's one study that actually shows that it um, causes increased intestinal permeability, and this was tested via a lactulose ruminose urine test. Um, and I don't know about how accurate that test is, but um, this is definitely something to keep in mind, um, particularly if you do have negative reactions to it. So um, just to finish up here, a couple interesting facts that I just came across included the fact that um, there are 100 times more immunoglobulins in bovine colostrum, which is the first four days of that milk, versus mature milk, which is after four days. And um, colostrum is also referred to as immune milk, which you can probably see from some of the uses um, why that would be. Thank you for listening. Let me know if you have any questions.